Android Studio Flamingo version 2022.2.1 is now available for downloading on the stable channel. In this version, you can find improvements for building beautiful UIs, new features that help you debug and inspect your apps, and more. Android Studio Flamingo is based on the IntelliJ IDEA 2022.2 version. It uses JetBrains Runtime 17, which introduces IDE performance improvements, better security, enhanced rendering performance on macOS thanks to the Metal API, and more. It also improves the IDE performance when using Kotlin, which positively impacts code highlighting, completion, and find usages. Let's take a look at all the updates in detail. We're constantly building out and improving tooling to develop great UIs. One of the tools is LifeEdit, that allows you to iteratively develop Jetpack Compose apps, LiveEdit works by pushing code changes directly to an attached device or emulator, which can improve your productivity by not requiring you to rebuild the whole project and switch context between code, previews, and devices. We've introduced LiveEdit in the past, so check out this video if you're new to LiveEdit. In Android Studio Flamingo, LiveEdit is still experimental, but you can enable it by going into Settings, under Editor Settings, and Live Edit. We've added options to select whether the changes are pushed automatically or when manually saving files, so you can now choose the option that best suits your coding style. This version of Android Studio also brings improvements to the project and module templates. Templates now use Compose Material 3 by default, unless they are specified as views templates. We recommend using the Compose Material 3 templates, for example, Empty Activity, as the best practice for creating an Android app. Material 3 Dynamic Color is now also supported for previewing UI. To preview dynamic colors in the Compose previews, just update the preview annotation by adding the wallpaper parameter with the one of the options from the wallpapers object, and see how your UI reacts to different users' chosen wallpaper. Note that this feature is only available from Compose UI tooling 1.4.0, so make sure you're using the latest version. You can also preview dynamic colors for your app's launcher icon. To see this, open the System UI mode selector from the toolbar within the Design pane, switch the wallpaper, and see how your app icon reacts to the changes. And similarly, if your project uses Android Views, you can preview dynamic colors in your UI while previewing your XML layout. Next, Android Studio Flamingo adds support for Compose Composition Tracing. With this, you can view your Compose functions in the System Tracing Profiler and measure how long each composable took to render. To get started with Composition Tracing, add a dependency on Runtime Tracing and make sure you use Compose UI and Compose Compiler 1.3.0 or higher. You also need to trace on a device running API 30 or higher. To get realistic data, you should run the profiler on a physical device with your build set to profilable, not debuggable. This allows you to inspect your app's performance with really low overhead, close to what your users would see, while limiting some capabilities that are only available with debuggable builds. In Android Studio Flamingo, we're introducing a new, one-click way of launching your app in the profilable mode, without the need to define separate variants in your build configuration. Just choose a profile with low overhead, which will build your app and start the profiler. Alternatively, you can still choose to profile your debuggable build by selecting Profile App with Complete Data but be aware that the performance might not represent the real-world experience. Now to get the composition tracing, when the profiler window opens, click on the CPU timeline, select the system trace, and hit record. Interact with your app, and after you're happy with the recording, you can click stop, which will open the system trace for your app. Here you can see the timeline with the data I recorded, which shows all the cold composables and their duration. 
To easily navigate to the code of a composable, you can just double-click the trace section. If you're not familiar with the profilable flag, or you're new to system tracing, we recommend checking the linked videos, which explain in depth how the features work and how to use them. Let's continue with features that help you debug and inspect your apps. In the previous Android Studio version, we launched App Quality Insights, a tool that helps you discover, investigate, and reproduce issues reported by Crashlytics, all within the context of your local Android Studio project. In this version, we're making improvements based on your feedback that will help you focus on high-priority issues and collaborate with your development team. To help you identify the most important issues, we're adding new filters and filter search. You can now filter by app version, Crashlytics signals, device types, operating system version, or play track. To only see production issues within an app, I uncheck any internal testing tracks, and once loaded, we can see all open issues ordered by frequency. Crashlytics provides multiple classifications of issues called signals, like an early signal, which denotes issues that happen close to the app start. You can filter for that too. Besides filtering, you can now annotate and close issues directly from Android Studio. This helps communicate important information to your team and let them know when an issue has already been taken care of. To add a note, open the notes pane within an issue, add your required comment and hit send. Then you can close the issue. Let's hope it won't reappear with a regression signal. And we packed even more into Android Studio Flamingo. To help with network requests, we're introducing a new feature within the network inspection tool that many developers asked for, traffic interception. With traffic interception, you can create and manage rules which determine what responses to intercept and how to modify these responses before they reach your app. To get started, navigate to the Rules tab in the Network Inspector and click plus to create a new rule. In the Rule Details panel, name your new rule and include information about the origin of the response you want to intercept. From the Response subsection, you can modify response status, headers, or request body. When you create multiple rules, these are applied in order that they are listed, so make sure to reorder them based on your needs. Let me show you how to apply a rule to a response body now. You can choose to either find and replace a section of the body in which the first found instance in the body is replaced, or you can choose to replace the entire content of the body by selecting Replace Entire Body. The rules are automatically saved and applied to any upcoming network request. Once a rule is defined, trigger a network request from the app to see the response changed in real time without the need to rebuild the app. For the Now in Android app, network requests are done when the app starts, so I need to restart it to see it in action. So here we can see that once the data is loaded, the response contains more up-to-date information. The next update is a minor improvement in the Layout Inspector. When you open the Layout Inspector, you no longer have to click to attach it to your app. It will auto-connect to the foreground process for you. And finally, for those of you working on optimizing build times, we've added Build Analyzer task categories. With Android Gradle plugin 8.0 or higher, instead of displaying Gradle tasks individually, Build Analyzer groups them by category. This way, you can see tasks that are specific, for example, to Manifest, Android Resources, Kotlin, Dexing, and others. These categories are sorted by the build duration, which makes it easy to know what category has the most impact on build time. Expanding each category displays a list of the corresponding tasks so you can further analyze what was the build time bottleneck. AGP now also requires JDK 17. Android Studio Flamingo comes bundled with a compatible version of the JDK and configures Gradle to use it by default. But don't forget to update if you're not using the JDK bundled with Android Studio. 
In this version of AGP, we've changed the default values for some built features that were previously applied in each gradual module. Features such as build config, render script, or Android Interface Definition Language, or AIDL, are now disabled by default. If you need to enable any of these features, make sure to explicitly set them to true in the build Gradle files in the modules you want to use them. We've seen these flags are often not used in all gradual modules, so this way we can reduce unnecessary build time. The next breaking change is that the R classes are now non-transitive by default for library modules and only contain resources defined in the specific library module. Please note that you might need to fix import statements in your project if you are referring directly to the transitive package name R classes. Another requirement is that for each module in your app, you must now provide a namespace property in the build Gradle file. This property replaces the package attribute set in Android manifest, which was previously used for setting both the application ID and R class namespace, which was coupling potentially unrelated concepts. If you want your test APK to have a different namespace for the generated R and build config classes, you can use the test namespace DSL property. The AGP Upgrade Assistant now supports these changes and can help you migrate your project settings. If possible, use it to ease the migration. One last thing to mention, for anyone using the SDK extensions to leverage the modular system components, the Lint tool can now scan for issues with them. In addition, Android Studio can auto-generate the correct version checks for APIs that are launched using SDK extensions. And that's a wrap for Flamingo. Downloading and start using it today. You can also try the next version of Android Studio, Giraffe, which brings even more features and improvements. As usual, please provide feedback regarding any issues on our issue tracker, which is linked in the description. Give this video a like if you're excited about the new features and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Happy coding!